In this video, I'll provide an introduction to differential thermal analysis and take a look at the instrumentation used for DTA. So differential thermal analysis is an analytical technique used to study the thermal behavior, including absorption and evolution of heat, for a wide range of material. And a sample and an inert reference are heated up under identical conditions and then any temporary difference between them is recorded. So the basic principle is that we're studying temporary difference between a sample and a reference as they're heated up uniformly. Instrumentation, we have a programmed electric heating block containing the sample and the reference. We also have sensitive thermal couples and data loggers in order to produce a plot of difference in temperature versus temperature and we have facilities for controlling the atmosphere around the sample. Applications include fingerprinting by looking at the pattern of the thermograms produced so it's possible to identify uh, what a material is based on the, the shape and pattern of the thermogram produced. We can also use it for the study of thermal characteristics, stability, degradation and kinetics. Precision may be as good as 1% and limitations, uh, we often need small sample sizes in order to minimise thermal conductivity problems between the sample pan and the sample itself. So we are limited on sample size because we need good thermal contact between the sample and the pan to get reliable results. And it tends to be less satisfactory than DSC with regard to the resolution of thermal traces and quantitative data. A DSC uh, refers to differential scanning calorimetry and that allows you to have quantitative data as well. So it doesn't just tell you the temperatures at which events occur but it tells you the energy associated with it. So you can think of DSC as being a quantitative version of DTA and I'll cover DSC in another video. Okay in terms of the instrumentation then we have heating and cooling we can go as low as minus 175 degrees all the way up to a thousand degrees and, and beyond for some specialist instrumentation. Uh, the heating rate tends to be between 0.1 to 100 degrees per minute. Now if you go at the very slow end of that the experiment is going to take a very very long time and if you go at the very high end of that so 100 degrees per minute the experiment is going to go so quickly that the danger is that you won't really see the thermal events properly they'll get sort of smeared out in the thermal trace. So what we typically do is go somewhere between 10, 15, 20 degrees per minute. It depends on what you're looking at and your method development. Certain applications you might want to go slower, certain applications you might want to go faster, but that's all part of sort of the method development and, and thinking about your application. Um, if we want to go to those cryogenic temperatures of minus 175 degrees, then we need a, a cooling system uh, to be able to get down to those cold temperatures. The atmosphere uh, can be inert, so something like nitrogen or argon, or it can be reactive, so something like oxygen. And the pressure can be controlled, so we can go anywhere from vacuum to high pressure. And that is something that's a bit of an advantage for DTA, not normally something that you get, for example, with DSC. Sample pans, um, normally aluminium, and the dishes are open to uh, the atmosphere so that if any groups uh, leave and, and there's anything decomposing that can then just leave um, and it also allows the atmosphere to get in there and say it's reactive we can get a reaction between the reactive atmosphere and the sample material. In terms of instrumentation then um, we, we have this inert reference um, so this could be alumina, silicon carbide, glass beads and it's just qualitative so we're able to measure the temperature at which events occur but not the associated energy. In terms of calibration then um, we need a sample material with a well-known melting point that gets analysed and then we can calibrate the temperature scale for the instrument. Uh, here's a schematic diagram of what the instrument looks like so we have a heating block, we have the sample pan, the reference pan and we have a, control, a controlled atmosphere. So this dome shape it allows us to control the atmosphere by flowing gas through. 
to control the composition of the atmosphere and also we can change the pressure there so we can either bring the pressure right down to vacuum levels or it could be a, um, just atmospheric pressure or we could get the pressure really high to high pressure um, and that's very very useful to try and um, look at how different thermal processes change under different pressures. Okay then we have temperature sensors um, and that is the overall sort of schematic diagram of the instrument and in the next video we'll get into how this can actually be used to analyse a sample. So I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thanks very much for listening.